Welcome to a lesson on quipus. To keep good records, the Incas used quipus to record quantities of items. The quipu is a collection of chords with knots in them, as we see pictured here on the left. These chords and knots are carefully arranged so that the position and type of chord or knot gives specific information on how to decipher the chord. H chords are attached to the main chord. So looking on the right here, this is a main chord and so is this. And the chords attached to the main chord, these chords here, would be called H chords. And there appears to be one H chord here. B chords, in turn, were attached to the H chords. So looking at this diagram here, we see H chords. Again, these are the chords that are attached to the H chord. Most of these chords would have knots in them. Rarely are knots found in the main chord. Knots tend to be mainly on the H and B chords. A kipu might also have a totalizer chord that summarizes all the information on the chord group in one place. Notice how here we see one totalizer chord. There are three types of knots, each representing a different value, depending on the kind of knot used and its position on the chord. The Incas, like us, had a decimal or base 10 system, so each kind of knot had a specific decimal value. So here we have a long knot, a single knot, and a figure eight knot. The single knot, pictured here in the middle, was used to denote tens, hundreds, thousands, and ten thousands. They would be on the upper level of the H chords. The figure eight knot on the end, this knot here, was used to denote the integer one. Every other integer from two to nine was represented with a long knot seen here on the left. Sometimes long knots were used to represent tens and hundreds. Note that the long knot has several turns in it. The number of turns indicates which integer is being represented. The ones units were placed closest to the bottom of the chord, then tens right above them, then the hundreds, and so on. In order to make reading these pictures easier, we will adopt a convention that is consistent. For the long knot with turns in it, representing the numbers two through nine, we will use the notation seen here the four horizontal bars represent four turns, and the curved arc on the right links the four turns together. This would represent the number four. We will represent the single knot with a large dot, as we see here, and we'll represent the figure eight knot with a sideways eight, as we see here. Remember, the figure eight knot represents one. Let's take a look at some examples. What numbers are represented on each of the three chords hanging from the main chord? So starting at the bottom, this is the ones place value, this is the tens, this is the hundreds, and this is the thousands. So we have a long knot in the ones place value. These three horizontal bars represent a long knot with three turns. So we have a three in the ones place value. We have two knots in the tens place value, so that's 20. Plus, we have three knots in the hundreds place value, that's 300. Plus, we have one knot in the thousands place value, so we have 1,000. So the total for chord A would be 1,323. Now let's take a look at chord B. Again, starting at the ones place value, there are one, two, three, four, five horizontal bars here. So we have a long knot with five turns. So we have a five in the ones place value, plus we have one, two, three, four knots in the tens place value, that's 40, plus we have zero knots in the hundreds place value, but we have two in the thousands place value, so we have plus 2,000. So the total for chord B would be 2,045. And now we'll look at chord C. We have an eight knot here, 
which represents one in the ones place value. So we have one plus, we have one, two, three, four, five, six knots in the tens place value. So we have six tens or sixty plus two knots in the hundreds place value. So we have two hundred and we have zero in the thousands place value. So chord C represents two hundred sixty-one. I hope you found this helpful.